Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Charlie and welcome to Charlie's Cruise Tips and Reviews. Sorry it has been a while but um, life has gone away a little bit and uh, my I have new hours at work so I wanted to do this review last week and when I got back from the cruise but it took me a little while to put it all together. So uh, today I will be reviewing the brand new Carnival Mardi Gras cruise ship. My friends and I were on the December 3rd sailing of it out of Port Canaveral. Um, I'm going to be straight up honest with you. This was the most beautiful cruise ship I have ever been on. I had seven wonderful days on the ship. Now, this ship, I'm not going to lie, is enormous. My friends and I did not have enough time to do everything that was on board this ship to do. Luckily, next year, we are booked on the Carnival Celebration out of Miami. Same time in December. Actually, December 4th. Should I say we were on the December 4th sailing? I'm sorry, not December 3rd. December 4th sailing of the Carnival Mardi Gras. Next year, we'll be on the... Uh, sister ship to Car December 4th Carnival Celebration Crew, so hopefully we'll get to complete everything we weren't able to do on the Mardi Gras on the Celebration, because it is the sister ship, so we'll have all the same amen amenities and maybe a couple of extra ones. So, um, the entire experience on this cruise ship was wonderful. First and foremost, it does leave out of Port Canaveral, so if you've seen any of my other videos before, you know you have to fly into Orlando, so consider how you want to get to Port Canaveral, whether you want to rent a car, whether you're going to take a mirror shuttle, or if you're going to, if you base, if you're going to stay in Orlando, if you're going to take the mirror shuttle, if you're going to rent a car, or if you're just going to spend a couple of days in Cocoa Beach, in which case you're going to need a rental car anyway. But uh, just keep that in mind, it is in Port Canaveral, so it's not one of the most easiest ports to get to. Um, so, first thing I want to talk about is the embarkation process. Um, the embarkation process, process the first day was flawless. I was expecting a few delays and hiccups because of pro COVID protocol. I work for an airline as most of you know, so going through all the paperwork of PCR tests, rapid tests, you have to make everything right. They're going through all your uh, documents. I was expecting a few hiccups, but the whole process was quick and simple. Just uh, everyone at Port Canaveral, all the Carnival uh, port staff knew exactly what they were doing. They were ready to go. And we were very on board. Um, we were in the term a lot quicker than I th thought we were because Carnival is going strictly by um, bo uh, boarding appointment time, or should I say check-in appointment time. So I was very sh that we got there a few minutes early. I thought we might have to wait about 5, 10, 15 minutes for our uh, check-in time, but they were ready to go as soon as we got there. We were checked in. We, the terminal, the new terminal there is beautiful. It, it's the, it's uh, the most beautiful cruise terminal I've ever been in because usually it looks, a cruise terminal, it looks like an old factory, like one of those older style terminals you might see in a movie or something. Th this was a beautiful terminal. The color scheme was a uh, very nice color scheme. There was plenty of seating around, unlike other cruise departure terminals I've been in, whether it's San Juan, Miami, Long Beach, actually. The one time I went on Long Beach, you had to wait outside, stand outside before you could board. So everything was outside there. They didn't even let you in the terminal before boarding. So uh, Sam is a bit much more seating than San Juan, more than Tampa, more than Fort Lauderdale. So any uh, terminal I've been in Miami, there was plenty of seating. There was no trouble finding seating. Plus, there were plenty of outlets for charging your phones and other electronics. I charged my camera battery a little bit. I charged my iPod a little bit, so if you're worried about your phone dying or charging electronics, there's plenty of electronic charging stations throughout the uh, new terminal, Terminal 3 in Port Canaveral. Okay, so I'm going to start talking about the ship itself. The ship itself, it very nice color scheme. Um, it's If you've been on one of the Vista class ships, the uh, Vista, the Horizon, the Panorama, it's pretty much close to, if not the same color scheme, it's a different... Uh, a bit different than what your the, the traditional color scheme on carnival ships such as the conquest class ships or liberty or uh, spirit class ships or uh, uh, fantasy class ships spirit class ships I, I mentioned spirit class ships chase it uh, destiny class ships so it's a uh, but it, it was very uh, it was very colorful it was very it was a nice change and the color scheme was beautiful very you'll see some if you'll see any of my Facebook page. I am going to upload some pictures from the ship on board there, so uh, just look out for those. I've been meaning to do that as well, so I, I will be posting some pictures from the ship on board my uh, page as well. 
Um, so the the atrium area, which is more wide open than any atrium I've ever been on on any cruise ship, uh, has three levels, and the main stage is in the uh, atrium area. There are three seating levels. Two of them have bars on it. Uh, you have the uh, the main one, the first bar on the main level of the atrium, and then the second one I forgot the name of the bar because I didn't go there that much, but it's on the second level of the atrium. So there are two bars there, and then the third level is pretty much uh, the fun shops and everything on deck eight. So there wasn't a bar in deck eight in that general area, but it was there were more of the fun shops and everything there. And uh, on the other side of the atrium, you had guest services and guys. And you had the summer landing area. Uh, okay, so it took a few days to um, figure out the location of the ship. Because uh, unlike the Destiny class ships, the Conquest class ships, um, the, the uh, Dream class ships as well. I forgot the Dream class ships. I'm sorry about that. Um, it's a different low. It's a different layout. It's more like the Vista class ship. So things are a bit more spread out. So it took a couple of days for me get down the layout of the ship but once my friends and I did we kind of knew where everything was after I would say day three of the cruise so going from one place to the other wasn't trying to figure out wasn't that difficult trying to figure out where we had to go and where we had not to go um the thing is and I'm sure some of you are wondering is what like, yes uh, and s some of the venues you did have to wear a mask uh in a comedy club it was called mask and sick if you were drinking you had to like you would sip your drink and then put your mask back on. In the main dining room, you did once you sat down at the dinner table, you could take your mask off. Same thing at the Alito Marketplace buffet. Once you sat down when you were ready to eat, one I mean you would go to the buffet with your mask on. Basically all indoor casting areas, most people were wearing masks. So it wasn't that big of an issue. No one really had to be told to put on a mask. And then by most of the staff members, basically the cruise was about 96, 97% vaccinated. I would say the only people on board who weren't vaccinated were the children who were under the age of 12 because I do not believe any medical exemptions were given on this cruise. So almost everyone or pretty much everyone, should I say, over the age of 12 on board the ship was vaccinated. So masking was not an issue and most people were pretty good about it. The piano bar, sometimes I had a mask on, sometimes I didn't. Depends. Not only was I drinking, but when you're trying to sing along, you just really can't do it with a mask on. So there were times I had my mask on in there, and there were times where I didn't. But as I said, uh, the masking wasn't as big of a problem as I thought it might be. And it was still a very over enjoyable experience. And the masking really played no part into the cruise whatsoever. So if anyone was wondering how wearing a mask on a cruise ship goes, it, it's no different than it is in, uh, in regular life right now where you work or if you go into a restaurant or you go to certain places where you have to wear a mask until you sit down. It's really no difference. Okay, so uh, on board the sh cruise, they had plenty of food and entertainment options. I'm going to get into that a bit later, but uh, the food and entertainment on the ship was phenomenal. But as I said, I'm going to get into that in a little bit. Um, the crew on board was fantastic. I can't say enough about them. They were, they basically, they do put the best crew they have on board the ship because it is their flagship ship right now it is the brand new ship it is their flagship so they literally put your best staff on board to, and especially in the inaugural season there are a couple of uh, crew staff uh members on board the cruise should i say uh bar staff and uh fun ship staff the uh, cruise director staff i should say who i've cruised with before who i saw i'm like oh i didn't one of them i knew was going to be on board and one just got moved from the uh, panorama on the crew, uh, cruise director staff from the Panorama, she got moved on to the cruise director staff on this ship. So she got promoted. And it was such a surprise to see her, and she and and she remembered me, which was even nicer. So uh, the crew on board, they were fantastic. It doesn't matter from the top down whether it was the rooms, cabin stewards, it was the bar staff, the restaurant staff, the cruise director, and his staff. Especially Mike Peck, the cruise director, he did a wonderful job. He was a great guy. It was a, they all did a wonderful job. I can't say enough about the crew. And there are a couple other people I could mention, but I'm not sure if I should because I'm friends with them and I they I don't really want to mention their names on here without their permission. So even though I'm friends with them or I'm, I know them and I've been friend, friends with them off the ship, I don't want to mention their names because I didn't ask them beforehand. So I'll leave that alone. Uh, so there were many different uh, bars and club options on 
board. Now, they don't have a traditional disco on this ship. It's a little bit like the Vista class ships. The late night disco takes place in the Limelight Lounge, which is not a traditional disco. It doesn't have the full bar and everything or the dance floor, but they they make uh, they make do with it. It's, it's still fun. It, at my age, I'm not that much of a disco t go into the late disco anymore, but it, it's still it, once or twice night. It's a lot of fun. The Mega Deck Party was a lot of fun. I kind of missed out on the '80s party that night because I was still in a candle bar with my friend. I didn't know what time it ended, so I went towards the end. I didn't know it. I was going to go towards the end. I didn't know it already ended, so I kind of missed out on it. But the deck, Mega Deck Party was a lot of fun. And if you go on Carnival, the Mega Deck Party is pretty much the signature party on the ship. So I would say on the ship, definitely, if you're on the Mardi Gras, make sure you get to the Mega Deck Party because it is a lot of fun. Um, the uh, bars and clubs, as I was saying on here, there are so many different options. I didn't get to try them all. There are a couple of bars and clubs I did get to that I want to mention. I went to uh, almost every night we went to the uh, fortune teller bar. We were pretty much a couple of times at the Tiki bar. I spent a lot of time at the uh, Serenity area bar because we spent most of our time in the Serenity area on the Serenity deck when we were on the board the cruise when we weren't on an excursion or anything. We went to the adults only area. So the Serenity bar staff was wonderful. The uh, We went to the uh, fortune teller bar almost every day. That bar was wonderful. Uh, the bar staff, should I say, there was wonderful. We went to the Brass Magnolia Bar. They were very well stocked. We went to the uh, the Brew House Bar and guys picking Anchor, Smokehouse, and Brew House. So we went to the Brew House a few times. That bar was very, uh, it was great there. Also, that's where we would go at night to watch uh, ESPN or sports because they had all the games on in there. So we would go there to watch the sports at night if there was a game we wanted to watch on, such as Thursday Night Football, Monday Night Football or uh, just ESPN highlights, spent a lot of time in the casino bar. So all the bars, um, they were, some of the bars you had to wait a little bit for your drinks. Like the ship was near capacity. It was about about, about 6,000 people on board, maybe just under 6,000 people. So the bar staff was very busy. So if you had to wait five minutes for your drink, you waited five minutes for your drink. It wasn't that big of a deal. You're on vacation, you're relaxing, you're having fun, you're with your friends, you meet other people, you're talking, you're chatting. So if you had to wait for your drink, it wasn't that big of a deal. And big deal, and also the bar staff was kind of swamped on this cruise, so I'm just going to say they did a wonderful job with the amount of people they had on board, so waiting for a drink really didn't ha have much of an impact on anything. Um, there was plenty, um, what was I saying? The, also another bar we went to was the Fred, Red Frog Tiki Bar, unlike the Red Frog Pub like they have on other ships, on deck 16 and 17 by the main pool, by the tides pool, or, uh, I'm sorry, the main pool, I forgot what the name of the main pool is, the tides pools all the way in the back of the ship, but by the main pool, you had the uh, Red Frog Outdoor Tiki Bar, it was two levels, they had all the TVs, it was a tiki bar, it was a lot of fun, it was especially good to go at night, you were outside, you could have a drink, you could watch uh, all the, uh, you could drink during, go there during all the parties, so it was a, it was a, a very, actually it was a much different atmosphere, it was a lot of fun than the traditional Red Frog pub. Okay, so uh, we also, okay, the food on board, it, there were so many different options on board. This is the first time actually on a carnival ship, my friend and I would actually go, went to a couple of the specialty restaurants, because normally every night we go to the main dining room. We did do that on my birthday. We went to, uh, before our main dining time table dinner. We went earlier in the night to uh, the guy's Hick and Anchor Smokehouse, and they have a wonderful menu. I got the, I believe I got the uh, ribs, the Barbecue, uh, the brisket, and I think it was either the chick, yeah, I got the, uh, the chicken with it, so I got, you had the three meat options, so I got the, uh, the ribs, the brisket, and the chicken, it was wonderful, if, right now, it's complimentary, when you do, in the next season, you are gonna have to pay a little extra for it, but I would say it's 100% worth the money, uh, we did have dinner every night in the main dining room, the staff was wonderful, they have a very good menu, they have all the traditional stuff, and they have a couple of, Steakhouse selections. If you want something else, if you want to only pay a little extra the surcharge for the steakhouse, they have that option as well. But it was a wonderful menu. Our table staff was wonderful. Our team head waitress, she was wonderful. 
and um, I can't say enough about the uh, the Maitre D was wonderful. The entertainment was a bit different than normally you get in the main dining room. Only a couple of nights the entire staff danced around, but there were also a couple of nights where they had a couple of solo acts where one of the waiters or waitresses would sing by them, entertain you by themselves, but it was wonderful and it was a great experience. I'm glad we went to the main dining room every night. Another day, we didn't go there for dinner. We went for lunch to the Bonsai Teppanyaki uh, Hibachi Grill for lunch. It was wonderful. It was very much worth the $32. It's actually about the same price, maybe a little less than a Hibachi Grill here in New York. So it was a wonderful option. The show was great, and I would definitely recommend it on board the ship. And I, it is worth the extra money for it. So I recommend the Bonsai Teppanyaki grill for a hibachi grill for lunch or dinner one day, whatever you prefer. I would definitely recommend it on this ship. Entertainment on board, just like any other carnival ship, it was wonderful. Um, it's a lot of fun. We went to the piano bar every night. Uh, he was Mike was very good. He I wish he knew a few more contemporary uh, songs from the uh, early 2000s, mid 2000s from when I was in college, but he still had a great selection. It was a lot of fun. After about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, he got dirty. It got dirty in there. It got adults only, so it was a lot of fun. He did play some adult-only songs, and so that was a lot of fun. Um, very good music was playing there. The comedy, as always, I only went one night, but the one night I did go, it was excellent. Co uh, Carnival does a great job with their punchliner uh, comedy, so I recommend it on this ship, or any Carnival ship, I recommend going to the punchliner club comedy, because it's 100% worth it. And the show's on the main stage every night. The main stage, as I said, was in the atrium. It was wonderful. 100% worth it. Different selections every night. Um, I just recommend it all together, especially the night when they have the Mardi Gras celebration for the namesake of the sh ship. That, that was a wonderful show. I definitely recommend it if you are on this cruise. So the entertainment on this ship, 100 wonderful, and I can't say enough. Um, the courts of call on this cruise, originally we were, were, I'm not going to spend much time on this, originally we were supposed to go to Grand Turk, but because the port in Grand Turk was not ready for a ship our size yet, they were still doing work on the top dock there on the pier. We uh, had a last minute change of an itinerary and we ended up in Nassau, and anyone who's been to Nassau before knows there's not much to do there, so we got off the ship, we walked around, did a little bit of shopping. We were upset to find out that we went, walked down to Senior Frogs and they weren't open yet. They weren't going to open for another week, so that was a bit disappointing. We were like, that that was our main saying, well, if we're going to be have to go to Nassau instead of Grand Turk, let's go down to Senior Frogs, and they weren't open. So we just pretty much went back to the ship, because as anyone who's been to Nassau knows, unless you go to Atlantis or Paradise Island or do an excursion, there's not much to do in Nassau. So we, so we just went back on board the ship and spent the rest of the day uh, on board the ship. Uh, then we went to Amber Cove, Dominican Republic. My friend and I, we went to the Lifestyle uh, All-Inclusive Resort there. That was the day of my birthday. We spent a lot of time. We hung out by the pool. We went on the beach a little bit. We were basically just laying out in the sun, relaxing and drinking and having a lot of fun. It was just a beautiful day. The weather was beautiful. It rained for maybe a total of five to ten minutes the entire trip. And that's when we were disembarking in San Juan and waiting in the cruise tunnel. Like, while we were pulling into San Juan disembarking in the cruise down road. That's the only time it rained. It was early in the morning. So we literally, rain did not affect our trip at all. And in San Juan, we did an excursion. We did a tour around the uh, new and old city. We spent an hour and a half at the beach, two hours at the beach in Carolina. Then we went back into old San Juan, made a couple of stops. And then after the excursion, we ended up in our traditional mainstay in San Juan of Senior Frogs and had a couple of drinks there. And then walked back across the street on the cruise ship. So uh, it was a, uh, the excursions and the Port of Call were a lot of fun. A little disappointing that we ended up in Nassau instead of Grand Turk, but it is what it is. We're on, it's not, it was out of our control, and but we still made the best of it. In closing, I'm just going to say, this was a wonderful cruise. It, it couldn't have gone any better if we tried. I'm giving this ship a 10 out of 10, two thumbs up, whatever you want to say I would go on the ship again. I'm glad I'm booked on the sister ship next year because I know exactly what I'm going to get on this ship. I know I'm not going to be disappointed. And next year, we'll be out of Miami instead of Port Canaveral. So it will be getting to the ship a bit easier than it was getting out of Port Canaveral. 100%, I would go on the ship again. I would wish it would be on another, not out of Port Canaveral, maybe Miami. But if I have to go to Port Canaveral for it, I'll do it because for this ship, it is 100% worth it. Thank you, everyone.
Happy New Year. Take care of yourselves. Happy cruising. And I'll see you all again very soon.